Hello everyone and welcome to another StarCraft 2 commentary with XO and today I'm going to be bringing you a game between Liquid TLO aka the little one spawning as the blue Protoss at the 6 o'clock position and Naiden spawning as the red Protoss at the 9 o'clock position so we're gonna have a PvP on Metalopolis now this is something I haven't cast in a very long time obviously these two players don't really need any introduction but I'm just gonna make a sketchy one for most of the people that uh, let's say uh, don't know who these guys are Liquid TLO has been uh, TLO, uh, like I said, aka the little one, has been one of the most um, popular figures in the StarCraft 2 scene since the beta phases of StarCraft 2. He has been one of those players that uh, in the beta he used to play random, then he played Terran, then he switched to Zerk, now he's playing random again. He also had a round in Korea, taking a shot at the GSL, but he decided to move back to Europe, uh, get back to his, uh, to, his, um, to his life over here on the European continent. So. He's been one of the most creative, uh, most ingenious players in StarCraft 2. Lots of players, lots of people say that he's not a very good player. I tend to disagree. The thing is, DLO likes to be very, very creative, and sometimes he's a little bit more creative than he should be, and it little, it really hurts his, um, it really hurts his gameplay. Sometimes creative is not what you really need. Sometimes just playing a straight up game, a very solid game, is what will win you that match. So. Um, TLO, I think he's, uh, by the way, he came back to random right now, he's playing random on the ladder, so right now we're gonna have him spawn as Protoss, which is very interesting, since he doesn't really play Protoss, but, um, I think he's just trying to get another, uh, a feel for the game again, I think he wants to see what he really wants to play, I don't think he's really decided what he wants to play right now, the, the state of the game is pretty confused at the moment, especially when it comes to Zerg, I mean, there's a lot of things that, uh, that, uh, are pretty, um, unclear when matching up against Terran and against Protoss for Zerg, so I think he's really uh, trying to get a feel for the game again, like I said. So, um, that's it for TLO, obviously a very, um, he is a very good player, by the way, he's not just creative, he is a very good player, but sometimes he just goes a little bit overboard and it does hurt his, his results sometimes. Now, over here, we're gonna have Knight, and Knight is a player from... Um, he was a part of the clan MTW for a very long time, same clan that Demaga is in, same clan that uh, the Muslim was in for a very long time. The Muslim just uh, joined the team EG, Evil Geniuses, as of late. Uh, same team that Idra is in, and um, in control. And uh, obviously, that's a very, uh, very well-known clan, especially on the North American realms. So both these players, by the way, uh, special thanks to Naiden for providing these replays. And um, I say these replays because there's going to be. Uh, two matches that I'm going to cast of TLO versus Night End. They're both ladder matches, so uh, nothing really special, as in it's not a tournament game, it's not a show match or anything. These are straight up ladder games. And I'm very happy to see this because many times that people actually offer replays or cast games of TLO, stuff like that, it's just uh, some um, very, you know, amazing macro games, some very late game oriented games, so to speak. And, um,. I just want to see some straight up ladder games because uh, despite what many people may think, ladder games are completely different from um, from uh, what you get to see in most of the games cast on the internet. Ladder games can be decided in 5 minutes or 10 seconds for that matter. So it's just uh, ladder games are very unpredictable, ladder games are pretty much straight up and um, there are many situations in which a lot of good players can end up losing in a very, let's say, stupid fashions, like um, totally unpredictable uh, losses that you can't really figure out why you lost. You have to watch the replay, you have to find out what was wrong with your build order, what you didn't scout out, what your enemy did better than you, and so forth. And ladder games, I like ladder games because they're the real deal. I mean, um, a lot of you guys who watch commentaries and stuff like that on YouTube or generally on the internet um, will see a lot of good games, a lot of really incredible games. But the thing is, on ladder, things don't evolve that way. So, um, you really have to understand that ladder is completely different from what you see in uh, a lot of the cast that you watch. But anyway, looking at the game, it seems like Night End is going for... Um, Looks like TLO went for a Stargate, he's getting, uh, he got two Phoenix, he did get the Warp Gate research as well, he's sitting on two Warp Gates right now, setting his Phoenix on the, um, towards the Night End right now, he's gonna try sniping, oh, good choice over there, sniping the Sentry, Sentry obviously a very gas expensive unit, 100 gas in that one, 
and um, moving back right now uh, well Naiden had um, Naiden has gone for actually he, he got this uh, robotics as soon as the uh, cyber core was done then added two more warp gates so uh, Naiden is going to get a Twilight Council as well, so he's sitting on three gates in a robotics facility, and he's going to get that Twilight Council. Let's see if he's going to be upgrading anything, or if he's going to go for Dark Templar. Oh, and this is very interesting, by the way. Um, this proxy pylon over here, I, I think this is going to be a Dark Templar game, because um, he's probably going to lay down a Dark Shrine over here. There we go, Dark Shrine on the way already for Naiden, obviously getting the double gas very early. And um, <clears throat> this means that, uh, obviously, why you want to do this is because it's very hard to for your opponent to actually scout this out the the dark shrine is uh, a, a tech building that um, is very very important if it gets scouted it's really it's really crap to actually play with our Templar if the opponent knows it's coming so placing it up here in a in a position that is very very unlikely to get scouted is really what you want to do so Naiden is going for an expansion of his own right now TLO has planted his Nexus a little bit uh, earlier than Naiden did but um, Let's take a look at the army size, and looks like Tilo is a little bit ahead of Night and Night and obviously, when you go for uh, Dark Templar, this is going to take uh, a little bit of. Um it's gonna take up intensive teching so to speak but when you look at night and space I mean look at this if you look at this you have no real idea that uh, Dark Templar is coming um, are coming I mean uh, TLO did scout the base out he saw the Twilight Council but no Dark Shrine insight and obviously very smart for night to actually build this uh, this Dark Shrine on that position now let's see is he going to warp in some uh, some Dark Templar there's a proxy pile that has been planted over here let's see let's see some Dark Templar are there any Dark Templar that are going to be warped in over here. Um, most likely, there we go, two Dark Templar on the way already, and it looks like Naiden is um, uh, moving this Observer on. Oops, and oops, 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 and TLO is moving. Yep, there we go, takes out uh, Naiden's Observer, and that is going to deny Naiden some scouting inside the TLO's base, but I don't think these Phoenix can do that much. A lot of Stalkers in Naiden's base right now, and let's see how many, uh, just still on two Dark Templar, not really making anything happen with those Dark Templar. He's being very patient right now. And um, TLO, I don't think TLO suspects that Dark Templar are out on the map right now. He hasn't scouted that Dark Shrine up at the top. And if you look at this, you just see three gate expand build from uh, Protoss. And this is very, very nice from Night End. I, I like to just really say this because your opponent is not really even going to want to scout. Um anything else other than these two bases because he's just gonna see two base with three gates and Twilight Council and additional warp gates right now and he's just gonna think you're playing a normal game with gateway units and so forth but Dark Templar are actually out and um, here we go TLO is moving this observer towards night and space looks like uh, looks like TLO is going for a robotics bay here we are robotics bay so he wants to get Colossus but I don't think that's really the answer against um, against Dark Templar he needs he has absolutely no cannons whatsoever not even a forge so this is going to be huge for uh, for Teal and uh, he only has this observer as detection and I think Naiden wants to snipe this out let's see if he's gonna be able to oh he does no he does not actually TLO moving in with his Phoenix taking out uh, Naiden's observer before his own observer gets taken out that was pretty interesting and it looks like um, night is going to be moving ahead with these uh, dark templar what is he going for he's actually going to go attack the nexus i believe there we go oh and the nexus is going to go down fairly fast where is that observer did the observer get taken out i'm, I'm not exactly sure and some four seals being laid down but uh not really anything happening oh my god and tlo is actually going to lose his nexus He's gonna lose his natural to these DTs. This is unbelievable. Oh my god. There we go. Wow. <laughs> this is really bad for TLO. Right now he's sitting on a one base while uh, uh, Nightend is mining off two. And uh, TLO really needs to make something happen. He's gonna lose this pylon as well. Let's see. And there we go. Pylon going down. Observer from TLO on the way, but it is really too late. And I think TLO's only chance right now is to just. Uh, just try to attack because he's sitting on one base he's obviously not going to be able to over macro night and by the way Matt night end is uh, I think the number one in his division in Masters League uh, from what I recall he has about 300 uh, 3300 or 3400 points in the Masters League so night end is uh, really playing a lot of games and he's uh, 
I'm doing very well right now. Let's see if TLO is going to be able to break this army over here. But uh, Naiden did get charged for his Zealot, so let's see. These Zealots might just do a lot of damage to these Stalkers. And looks like, looks like, looks like... These Zealots are actually going to do a lot of damage. Those four seals not really doing much for TLO over there. And Zealots are applying a lot of pressure right now. A lot of Immortals for Night and, and Stalkers as well. Some more Force Fields being laid down over here. But the, the Zealots are just moving in there. Doing a lot of damage to those Stalkers. And look at these Stalkers just going down to the Zealots so fast. And it looks like TLO is not going to be able to do anything. And he does GG out. And that's pretty much it. Wow, what a what a solid game from Night End. This was really solid. By the way, uh, Blink on was on the way for Night End as well. One uh, Colossus on the way for TLO, but TLO obviously, if you look at the army count, look at the supply count, uh, 124 over 44 of TLO. So really a crushing defeat over TLO from Night End. Um, really well played for Night End over there. And um, what can I say? Um, this uh, was worth all the money. Basically a strategic strike over here with three DTs taking out TLOs. Uh, Nexus while the Observer was out of position or got destroyed, I'm, I'm not sure exactly, but I think it was destroyed because TLO was getting another Observer for this uh, to scout out the Dark Templars attacking over here and I think, well this is what happens when you get no cannons whatsoever in, TV, in, in PvP. So in uh, Protoss versus Protoss, if you, if anything like this happens and you get unexpected Dark Templar in your base and you have no cannons, you're pretty much uh, defeated because there's no way for you to scout that and uh, observers are really slow without the uh, without the speed upgrade and it's really hard to actually uh, keep up with the DTs as DTs move very fast and they do a lot of damage so basically that Nexus was sniped in like what 15-20 seconds so really interesting play from Naiden and uh, I have to give it up to him because he just made it look like, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go for straight up gateway play with a robotics facility and Twilight Council, get some upgrades for my gateway units and that's it. But meantime, he did get this Dark Shrine over here and the DTs were worth all their money, so yeah, it's what happens in ladder. And basically, guys, this is what ladder really looks like, so don't get fooled by all the replays and all the... Um, you know games that are cast on YouTube and stuff to get to watch obviously those games are really cool But the uh, ladder really does look like this for like 90 95 percent of the time So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this I'm gonna be casting another game of TLO versus nine and on steps of war. So I'll see you guys there um, Yeah, that's it. So I'll see you guys on steps of war